Today is going to be a great day. I am Nikki G, your host. Welcome to The Lone Doctrine, the food for thought exploration station, and your place in making today better than yesterday. We keep it short, simple, actionable, and practical. How is it that we're so close to closing out another year? I always chuckle a little when I catch myself saying, time sure does fly, because my parents used to say that to me all the time, but it's so true. I feel as if time is moving faster and faster. Is it just me? But as we come into another new year, there's no better time than the present to continue to live the best life. Every month, we pick a topic to dive a little deeper into, and last month, we were talking about self-worth, how we can keep filling our cup. Semi-recently, we put out a question on Instagram that asked what you wanted to explore more of, and the topic of self-care techniques seemed to be the overall feel. I would love for you to join us on Instagram at Lone Doctrine and send me a DM letting me know what you want to explore. We are here to support you to our best abilities and our door is always open. So this month, we're going to explore lots of different techniques in a way that will give you a good amount of knowledge to see if the various things would be something you'd want to incorporate into your life. We believe the loan in loan doctrine really celebrates the fact that we're not all the same and finding what works for you is so important. Sometimes we get lost in the mix of the societal norms or what we might think other people expect of us, but my friend, that is not the case. We are individual humans and the better we find what works best for us, the better we are as a collective. We must all fill our cups. All right, now that I've ranted a little bit, let's start diving into some ideas. We've come up with some of what you asked for and some that are common and not so common. Here's the list of the month for self-care techniques. Number one, physical self-care. Number two, meditation. Number three, Modern habits, this is how we use technology, how we use the internet, social media, and how it's impacting our lives more than we realize. And number four, relaxation techniques. Some of you might be familiar with some of these things and others will explore a little bit deeper such as progressive muscle relaxation. So now that we have our list for the month, let's dive into the first one, physical self-care. I am not a professional doctor, nor am I a professional health consultant, but I am and have been very professional at being sick. I was born with what they still can't figure out, some sort of autoimmune disease, and I can get really sick at the drop of a hat. Majority of my family photos as a child is me crying because when I was young, I was sick all of the time. As I got older, I started to make some decisions on my physical habits and eating habits. Although I still have my health challenges, making these changes has made it much, much better and much more manageable. Taking care of your body is so important, especially if you want to function efficiently. Sometimes I think we take better care of our household appliances or even our car better than we care for our bodies. If your car wasn't running efficiently, I bet you'd do something about it. But more often than not, so many of us just keep pushing and pushing, ignoring our health problems until something bad happens or worse, it's too late. Also, have you ever realized that there is a direct connection between your body and mind? When you care for your body, you'll think more clearly and feel better. They work together. So if you're experiencing a lot of mental challenges, there may be benefits in looking at your physical care. Physical self-care is how we choose to fuel our body, our food, our drink, whether we're taking on bad habits such as smoking, too much alcohol, 
too many meds, how much sleep you're getting, how much physical activity you are doing, and how well you're caring for all your physical needs. Here's a good place to start. Ask yourself these questions to get a clear picture on where you are and where you could be. Even if you have a great regimen, which is awesome, there's always room to improve. Now, whether you're new or not in listening to this podcast, I always remind you of the importance of honesty. None of this, I mean none of your journey towards betterment will create the change you seek if you're not honest with yourself. Honesty is the best policy, no joke. Okay, here we go. Ask yourself these questions. Are you getting enough sleep? Is your diet fueling your body well? Are you taking charge of preventative habits to keep you well? I'll give you a few seconds and I'll ask again. Are you getting enough sleep? Is your diet fueling your body well? Are you taking charge of your preventative habits to keep you well? This is a good place to start. Although each of these things can be an ongoing exploration, just use it as a starting point. So let's dive a bit deeper into the physical self-care of sleep. Sleep is tough sometimes. At least it is for me. As some of you know, I'm also a professional musician. I have been in the music and entertainment world most of my life. While other kids were home tucked into bed, I was wide awake, running around and playing on stages, falling asleep in diners after a show, and my bedtime was no earlier than midnight most of my life. Working as a musician, you're up all kinds of crazy hours. It can wear on you really fast. Now, it's not to say that you have to be to that extreme. You could be staying up night after night, binge watching your favorite TV show, getting only a few hours of sleep after night and night, and then bam, the reality of lack of sleep hits hard. From the National Heart, Lung, and Body Institute, Here's why studies have said why sleep is so important. Sleep plays a vital role in good health and well-being throughout your life. Getting enough quality sleep at the right time can help protect your mental health, physical health, quality of life, and safety. The way you feel while you're awake depends in part on what happens while you're sleeping. During sleep, your body is working to support healthy brain function and maintain your physical health. In children and teens, sleep also helps support growth and development. The damage from sleep deficiency can occur in an instant, such as a car crash, or it can harm you over time. For example, ongoing sleep deficiency can raise your risk for some chronic health problems. It can also affect how well you think, react, work, learn, and get along with others. And since we're talking about physical self-care, Here's how it can affect you physically. Sleep plays an important role in our physical health. For example, sleep is involved in healing and repairing your heart and your blood vessels. Ongoing sleep deficiency is linked to increased risk of heart disease, kidney disease, high blood pressure, diabetes, and even strokes. Sleep deficiency also increases the risk of obesity. For example, one study of teenagers showed that with each hour of sleep lost, the odds of becoming obese went up. Sleep deficiency increases the risk of obesity in other age groups as well. Sleep help maintains a healthy balance of the hormones that make you feel hungry or full. When you don't get enough sleep, your levels are all over the place. This makes you feel hungrier than when you are well rested. Sleep also affects how your body reacts to insulin, the hormone that controls our blood glucose, our sugar levels. Sleep deficiency results in a higher than normal blood sugar level, which may increase your risk for diabetes. Sleep also supports a healthy growth and development. Your immune system relies on sleep to stay healthy. This system defends your body against foreign or harmful substances. Ongoing sleep deficiency can change the way in which your immune system responds. 
For example, if you're sleep deficient, you may have trouble fighting common infections. Not to freak anyone out, but it sounds like sleep is really important, especially when it, become, when it comes to your physical self-care. And your physical self-care is one of the pieces of your overall self-care. You could go on and on and on and on on how important this is, not just for your physical health, but also your mental health. Sadly, a lot of people struggle with getting enough sleep. It can really wear on you physically. And again, because the body and mind have a strong connection, it can then start to wear on your mind. You might be the personality type saying, eh, I sleep when I'm dead. I used to be because I was a workhorse. But take it from me personally, because I've experienced major burnouts. It will catch up to you. So now what? Well, here are some things to explore more if you're having trouble in the sleeping realm, or even if you just want to fine-tune your sleeping habits. If you are having serious challenges with sleep, I highly suggest finding professional help, not just a doctor, but also a holistic advisor or someone that specializes in sleep studies. They do exist and can be extremely helpful. In the meantime, here's some good food for thought. Let's explore ways to sleep like a baby from Zen Habits. Problem sleeping can be a major drag on happiness. If you can't sleep well, you can't function well during the day. Sleep is a deep part of the body's rhythms, and it's one of the hardest habits to change. That said, it is changeable. Let's take a quick look at some of the problems that keep people awake rolling around in bed. Not tired yet. Your sleeping pattern is set that you usually sleep later. So if you go to bed earlier, you're not tired enough to fall asleep or you're too tired. It's possible to be so exhausted that sleep is difficult. This tends to be a problem less often than not tired enough though. And how about worries? You've got something spinning around in your head so the sleep doesn't come. Sometimes it's replaying something that's happened or things that someone said or other times it's worrying about something coming up or something that you are planning. And what about computers? If you're on the computer, often in bed, you might be tired but have a hard time sleeping because your mind isn't unwinding. There are lots of other issues, but I've found these to be the most common. Let's look at how to help with them. I don't have all the answers, but here's some ideas. Number one, exercise. A good hard workout or run, bike, or swim will get you nice and tired. Of course, if you have physical impairments, you can work with somebody to find what's going to be safe and what works for you. A good yoga workout is a wonderful way to do that as you learn mindfulness at the same time. Even if your workout is early in the day, I often go to bed with a tired body and look forward to the rest. Don't work out right before bed though because there's too many hormones that come up and that are actually made to keep you awake. Get up early. This was a really hard one for me because I'm usually someone that is a night owl, so I'm still kind of trying to find whether this works for me or not. So let's experiment together. You can get your body to shift its sleeping schedule by slowly getting up earlier. Try just 15 minutes earlier than normal for a week, then another 15. If you get up earlier, you'll be a bit tired during the day and when it comes time to go to sleep, you'll actually enjoy the rest because you'll be genuinely tired. And how about establishing a bedtime ritual? This is really good to put our rhythms back on track. It takes time to unwind the body and the mind. At least an hour before bedtime, start slowing down. Turn off the computer, flush and brush your teeth, Put away things you were using in the evening. Lay down and just read a book that's not on your phone or on your computer. This kind of ritual helps establish in your mind that it's time to go to sleep. And your body takes this cue and begins to prepare itself. Here's a big one. Keep your room only for sleeping. Don't eat there. Don't watch TV there. Don't use your computer there. Keep those activities in the living and dining rooms or somewhere else. So that when you go to bed, there's just that one thing to do. 
Be sure to make the room dark when you go to sleep too. Your body reacts to light. And how about just focusing your attention? Once you've done your bedtime ritual and unwound, and your body is nice and tired, you need to quiet the mind. One trick for doing that, obviously do this when you're in bed and in a safe place, not right now if you're driving, is close your eyes and visualize what you did first thing of that day. That might be opening your eyes and getting out of bed. Then visualize the second thing you did. Let's say you went to the restroom, washed your face, drank a glass of water. Then you started the coffee, but first had to grind the beans. Visualize these tiny steps in detail. Eventually, you won't get past the first hour of recalling your day before you fall asleep. It's kind of like counting sheep. And remember that change sometimes comes slowly. Be patient with sleeping changes. They are difficult because we are tired. Our mind doesn't have the discipline to stick to the change. Our body and mind want to do what they're used to doing. But if you change a little bit at a time and forgive yourself for messing up, there's actually no messing up. It's just small changes. Then you can make those changes become a new habit. The benefits of a good night's sleep are endless. Sleeping is essential to our body. There's no way around it. I encourage you, if you haven't already, to try these small changes and see over the month's time how you start to feel. Yes, I said a month because these type of changes take time. So go easy on yourself. Trying it for a few days and saying, well, that didn't do a darn thing. Well, that's because you took it out of the oven too soon. Poor analogies brought to you by me, Nikki G. In all seriousness, though, you need to give it time and consistency to even see if it will be a good change that's beneficial to you. And even if it isn't, you're still one step closer to finding out what is. If you found value in the Lone Doctrine or if you believe in our mission, we would be so grateful for your support. We've partnered up with Patreon, a place where you as a supporter can become a patron in helping us stay on air and keep fighting the good fight. By becoming a Patreon, you make today better than yesterday. Visit patreon.com slash Lone Doctrine, P-A-T, R-E-O-N dot com slash loan doctrine or the link in the show notes. There's a great quote, be a fountain, not a drain. And we hope to be able to continue to be your fountain of food for thought. The exchange in your support not only results in good vibes, but anything and everything goes towards the betterment of our mission. Thank you so much for your consideration and an extra thank you to our current Patreons and we Hope to see you over at patreon.com slash Lone Doctrine. Thank you for tuning in. And if you liked this episode and know of someone else that may also benefit from our food for thought exploration, we'd love if you'd share this episode. It would mean the world to us if you could help get this message and our cause out to as many people as we can, because together we are better or If we could have a few seconds of your time, we'd love to hear your thoughts. You can leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, which in turn helps us show up in the search engines so others in need can find us. I am forever grateful. And until next time, keep fighting the good fight. It's a great